So you've just figured out how to do a new maneuver in the simulator, and you're about to go out to the field and start flying for real. But how well can you actually do it, and is it ready for the real world? In this video, we'll go through five exercises you should do on the sim to give yourself the best chance of making a successful transition with that new move to the outside. Number one, right and left. Take that new move from in front and move it over to the right at a slow pace. In our case, we're doing aileron TikToks, but it applies to absolutely any maneuver you're learning. When it gets to about 45 degrees, bring it to a stop for a second and then start on the way back. When you get to the middle, pause for a bit and then continue over to the left and do the same thing. The model should not rotate during any of these exercises. It should stay in a fixed orientation. So when things start to go wrong, you know it's the perspective and not wind direction or any external factors. In theory, your stick movement should stay the same as what you were doing. And when I say perspective, I mean it's you and I messing up, not the helicopter. Number two is horizontal squares. Once again, start in front and move the model to the side until you reach that 45 degree view and hold it there for a second. Then move it away and continue along the square while pausing at each corner. We're adding forward and backward elements because in the real world you're likely to be pushed around and you need to be able to bring it back or push it away and maintain position against a breeze. I'm doing these exercises with a different maneuver each time to keep it fun, but you should do them with that move that you want to take to the outside. So anything from hovering to TikToks, rolling, pirouetting, whatever. The other purpose of making shapes like this is to reduce your focus on what the sticks are doing. In the real world, you have much less mental availability because there's so much more to think about. You've got how close the ground is, why the helicopter is reacting differently, and is it handling whatever you're doing? So by making shapes with the helicopter, you're having to cope with so much more, which means when you go outside, you'll have the mental capacity to deal with all that extra stuff. The third horizontal exercise is circles. Circles are particularly tricky as they combine sideways movement with forwards and backwards, and as you go round, the flight path is continually changing. I'm doing it here with an inverted hover to show that these exercises work with any maneuver. Because the sim is so stable, it's too easy to hover. But add a circle like this, and you have to continually push it out of a stable position and then bring it back. Hovering is a whole lot harder when you have to do it like this, which means it'll be easier to transfer to the real world. Another benefit of these exercises is instead of hammering away at a move trying to get it perfect, which is normally when they start getting worse, we're now focusing on getting the shapes right instead of the mechanics. We'll be learning faster and subconsciously without getting bored on the simulator. Vertical squares are where we introduce height changes. In the sim, we probably practice at eye level, but out there, we'll be somewhat higher. So this exercise is about changing that view and making sure we can handle it. I'm doing rotating TikToks this time, and as before, we'll move the model out to the side and pause it before we move up and around the square. Once again, the model isn't changing in relation to the wind or vertical angle, it's only changing relative to us. So when it gets a bit loose at the top, that's purely us doing something different because we're perceiving the helicopter differently. As we practice and get used to that view, we'll be able to keep much better control of it up there, just like when we did when it was in front of us. You don't have to do these exercises a lot, just a few times before you take your new maneuver outside for real. You'll have a far better chance at coping with the extra difficulties, as well as having additional thinking room, which could be the difference between a struggle and success. Vertical circuits are the last exercise. These will stress your mental capacity by making you manage the vertical and sideways components to get a decent circle shape. I'm doing four point TikToks this time and it's actually not looking too bad. This is really difficult as you're managing all the elements of doing your move and controlling the sideways and vertical to get the right shape as well as the depth so it doesn't wander off. If you can do this, you really are ready to take it to the outside world. In conclusion, making shapes is an amazing way to make you think less about the sticks, stretching your mental capacity and making the sim a little more interesting. This will benefit you far more than bashing away for hours on something boring. One of my favorite shapes is the figure eight. We won't go into it here as I have a video on that which I've linked to down below. It's amazing for working on symmetry and weaknesses for absolutely any maneuver. I really hope this helps you take your sim flying into the outside world. Until next time.